Hey, shut a warm. Hey, your heart about some outside about some cockroach. Broke your thumb. Cause like your heart about some outside. Giving our praises, going on honors unto you. How about me? I'm shy about some cockroach. Double honors to the apostles, bitches, a great millstone. Peace and best to the hopeful elect. This is your brother Zion from GMS Atlanta. Back with another edifying lesson. And, you know, Lord willing, uh, Lord willing, this is quick and straight to the point. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. This is verse 15 in the AMP, or the Amplified Bible. You shall not do injustice in judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor, uh, nor show a preference for the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. So I'm 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 reading this because you know, and I've also been going over the laws lately, the last couple of weeks. So you know, a lot of things come out that pertain to the the law. You know, we've been going over back and forth with you know GMS and the New Testament. Um, you know, the, the the new covenant, the old covenant, as opposed to Israelites that say that we're fully in the New Testament or fully in the new co- the the new covenant. And we say, you know, we hear Jesus say that that's not so based upon the doctrine and precepts and what we see in the spirit. Um, one thing that it does say about. The new covenant is that we shall not teach our neighbor anymore to know the Lord. And that is definitely something that we're doing. From ISUPK to IUIC to GOCC to Sakari to GMS to any other Israelite group. We're definitely teaching our people on the streets, whether it's social media or online or YouTube videos. We are telling our people, fellow Israelites, whether they know they're Israelites or not, to know that they are Israelites and to know the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Shai. So that's the first cut to that doctrine that we're in the New Testament. Another thing I want to say is as far as keeping the law, Right. We are to make sure that we have a perfect judgment. We are to make sure that our judgment is on point through the spirit. Of course, we want to be as perfect as possible. That's what I'm going to say. Um, we're not to. Uh, if you know, if you see a brother go off. If you see a brother that, you know, that's going off, you got to say something. You got to ask questions. You have to inquire. You know what Jake said, inquiring minds want to know, right? We we are judges pertaining to this truth and this knowledge and this wisdom of Yahweh Bashman was shy. And we see that our brothers are suffering, even us are suffering unto themselves. Cause a lot of you know, we say we catch hell, we catch hell. A lot of the hell that we catch, it ain't coming from me, saw. It ain't coming from your job. It ain't coming from your boss. It ain't coming from your women or your kids. It ain't coming from brothers in the camp. It's coming from you, Jake. You, Jake woman. It's coming from you. You are afflicting your own soul. You are causing harm to yourself. You know? A lot of times, you you know, we are suffering from ourselves. From uh, self-inflicted wounds spiritually and mentally, but there are times where where we can see that there are brothers and sisters that are dealing with things uh, that we need to say something about. You know, a lot of you know because of the curses, we suffer depression. 
you know, we might suffer uh, uh, suicidal thoughts. We suffer from um, uh, idiosyncrasies between brothers and the camp. You know, we suffer from a lot of things that we are not internally or mentally proud of or that we can say that we relate to. And that causes us that we can pretty much stagnate ourselves because we think that we're not adequate enough. I'm not adequate enough to be around this brother. This might be a lieutenant or a captain or an elder or a bishop. I'm not adequate in the truth enough. Or you might suffer from, oh, I just got cursed out, you know? Or you might just be simply depressed because of whatever weight upon you and the spirit is weighing you down. I suffer from that. I believe we all suffer from that at times. Um, but as a brother that can say that I've overcome that right now at this point, right now, I'll say as advice or uh, exhortation, uh, the law says here that, that you know, we are to uh, judge fairly, right? If you see that, if you've overcome that and then you see a brother asking what's wrong, you see a sister, hey, you know, you know Because, you know, like something wrong, then, hey, as, as Scripture talks about confessing your sins, so, not saying you got to spare the beans on every detail and every aspect of your life, but there are things in the Spirit that, you, that we have a conflict and internal warring with that we have to address. This, you know, certain things have to be addressed. <clears throat> Uh, it says in the AMP, you shall not do injustice in judgment. You should not be partial to the poor, nor show a preference for the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. If something, you know, you might see something visually or spiritually that, that may that you believe as a pattern, right? As a pattern that you've seen, like, no, you know, what? shit, this brother's always down. I need to ask what's going on with this brother. Then you can operate the Offer the proper advice. You might see something going on with an elder brother. You know, you're all right. You know, is it, you know, is it stress. You know, something I could do. You know, you you know, and inquiring is the best thing you can do when you don't know something. As they say, it's, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Um, but you can be a fool. But at the same time, when it comes to this truth and you know, we are our brother's keeper. So if you see something, we have to be more prone to approaching a brother, approaching a sister and saying something about what's going on. You know, really the brothers, you know, I know that there's believing sisters, so I am putting that out there. But really the brothers, uh, you know, women, sisters, you know, be subject to your own husbands if you have them. And it's best to ask what's wrong, husband, if you feel a certain way than to let your own mind wander because that is what leads to wantonness, you know. And as for brothers, that's what leads to, this brother don't like me. Oh, man, oh, Lord, maybe maybe I'm not right. And then it leads you down the path of wanting to destroy yourself. No, we are not to suffer um, suffer um, sin upon one another, right? Um, I'm going to keep reading. Leviticus 19 and 16, Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord Yahweh. I'm going to read it in the AMP. You shall not go around as a gossip among your people. Which we know that's really the social media of our people is nothing but gossip. So we have to limit ourselves from that type of input because that's what also puts us into a certain mind state. Too much social media can lead to a brother thinking they got to get 4K cameras. They got to go to every community. Yeah, I'm talking about the IUIC. I'm going to call it straight. 
I'm a straight shooter with that. Uh, you know, we don't have to necessarily do that. Is there anything necessarily wrong with it? No. But our duty is to preach the word while we're here in Babylon. And then the elect is going to be increased. We can't go to every Israelite. We can't help every community. That's a part of the Lord's judgment. And we're definitely not supposed to be gossipers and spreading false rumors and lies amongst these congregations in these camps. And GMS and otherwise. It says, and you are not to act against the life of your neighbor with slander or false testimony. I am the Lord Yahweh. We're not supposed to speak against each other. If you see something wrong, say something. Even Esau has that. If you see something, say something. That's a whole campaign. Buses, trains, cops push that, commercials. You know, we have to get more in the habit of addressing things in the spirit when we see it to keep each other tight in this faith. You know, we spare, you know, if if you're the type of person, type of brother, or type of camp that spares emotions too much, that could lead to destruction. Remember, Apostle uh, Tahar put out years ago, you got to learn to be an asshole. You know, it's better to be the asshole and be right than to, matter of fact, you know what, let me get this. Um, and then I'll come back to Leviticus 19. Oh, shit. <laughs> Let me get it. Uh, yeah, Psalms 141 and 5. Let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. For yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. I'm reading in the AMP version. Let the righteous thoughtfully strike, correct me. Let the righteous thoughtfully correct me. It is a kindness. It is done to encourage my spiritual maturity. So when you get brothers that tell you something or asking or inquiring or something, um, that is being done to edify, encourage, and grow you in the spirit. Pursuing the second period of the third chapter. Growing knowledge in the spirit of Yahweh Shai, right? It says, it is the choicest anointing oil on the head. So even before the actual physical frankincense and myrrh and the cinnamon and the smells that brothers put together physically with the oil, the real anointing oil is telling brothers about themselves. And that's something that we have to make sure that we're um, uh, practicing and putting in, in force in the camps. It says, it is the choicest anointing oil on the head. Let my head not refuse to, ag- to accept and acknowledge and learn from it. We have to make sure that whenever, whenever if a brother curses us out, we got to learn from it, bro. Yes, the scripture does say that we, that rebukes are not, uh, uh, not comfortable. Yes, we know in the flesh it's not comfortable, bro. It feels bad. That's the shame. You're supposed to feel shame. Children feel shame when their mom and daddy tell them, you weren't supposed to do this. You drawing on the walls, paint pictures of trees and birds and race cars all over your mom and daddy wall. They got to pay for the apartment or the house, paying rent and mortgage. They just put that wallpaper up. You drawing on the walls. Your mom and daddy ain't going to get on you. So how much more are you doing things that are wrong in the spirit? The, the, listen, Yahweh Hashem always shot set up apostles, bishops, elders, brothers to get on us about certain things. It says... Let my head not refuse to accept and acknowledge and learn from it. What is the key thing? Right? Even Esau understands you got the 12-step program. The first step is to admit you're an addict. Right? Isn't that what they say? 
Well, the first step to understanding that you're wrong in this truth is to accept and acknowledge it. You have to accept it first. Damn, I have been going off. Don't be stiff-necked like Israel is prone to being. We all suffer from being stiff-necked at certain points, but we can't be stiff-necked all the time. We got to be right, especially being uh, leaders of this nation as being called to be teachers and preachers and prophets and all of that. The priests, right? We have to make sure that we accept when we're wrong. It says, and acknowledge it, right? Take accountability. Brothers that watch videos all day about the black woman not accepting accountability, and then you in the camp and you, brother, what are you getting on me? You're doing the same thing the nigga woman doing. Same thing this so-called black woman doing, you doing. No, you have to acknowledge it, bro. Acknowledge it, Akia. Acknowledge it. Accept it, acknowledge it. It says, and do what? And learn from it. We have to learn from our mistakes. It says, for still, my prayer is against their wicked deeds. Right? So you have those that are wicked, right, that are going to continue to do the wrong thing, starting with Esau. But we that are in this truth, we're to accept our wrongdoing and correct it, right? But you st that, that don't mean you, you sink in your sorrow. I ain't going to curse out Esau no more because I'm wrong. You feeling like you done, done did the world a disservice because you're in the truth and you cursing out Esau, but then you, or oh, I don't sin. So what? Of course we have. That's why we repent and we're given the opportunity to change ourselves. Esau don't get that opportunity. We still got to push forward. The wicked still got to get cursed out. But when it comes to you getting cursed out and you getting rebuked, you have to accept it, acknowledge it, and correct it. Okay? We're still against the wicked. This is uh, Psalm 141, and I'm going to read verse 4. Incline not my heart to any evil thing, to practice wicked works with men that work iniquity, and let me not eat of their dainties. Let the righteous smite me, and this is the point, let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Brothers got to, hey, look, we in the camp, we got to start anointing ourselves. You have a family, anoint yourselves and your children. You know, hey, you know, you say, hey, Yahweh, I was shy. Barak, Rapai, Wakazak. The brother says his name three times, you know, and then you put the anointing oil on him. You know, you say the anointing prayer, Yah Barak, Ka Yahweh, Wa Yashamarka, Yahar Yahweh, Pan Yahweh, Al Yaka, Wa Yachanka, which speaks about grace. Why uh, uh, um, Yahweh about you know, I was shy, right? You put the name of the Lord on them, and then you you uh, you know you put the blessing on them, okay? Ya Barak ka Yahweh, wa ya Shamarka, ya Ar Yahweh, pan Yahweh, ayaka wa ya Chanka, ya Shah Yahweh, pan Yahweh, right? Your face pan Yahweh, al yaka. Wayasham Laka Shalom. And that he sends peace upon you. That, that's what the priests put upon all Israel. Okay? You anoint your sons, your daughters, your women, your, yourself first and foremost. You know? Let me see. Um. Leviticus 19, uh, Leviticus 19 and 15, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, 
no honor the per no honor the person of the mighty. You can't just look at a brother because he might be in a certain position of leadership uh as if he's faultless. Now, is there an order? Yes, there's an order. You don't just go out and be, a, be, be, be rebuking the apostles and bishops, bro. That ain't something you do. You don't just go off on a tangent and then rebuke the elders of your camp. There's protocols, okay? But the key thing is you, don't, you, you shall do no unrighteousness. There's checks and balances. Pastor Hart says it. He, he's not just the sole leader, no. The leadership of Great Millstone speaks. The leadership of the Great Millstone regions and the camps and brothers speak. Things are brought to the light that needs to be addressed. And that should be a practice amongst individual men when they see an individual brother sin and not suffer that upon them. It says, But a righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. It's in the law, right? You can't just be making up stories. Slandering, brothers. GMS, you know, Israelites, y'all should know good and well, GMS is not sitting here taking young, young girls and young women and doing anything with them against the law and the, and the scriptures or against the law of America. But y'all would like to push the old GMS do this and they teach that. We just tell you what the Bible say. But you have people and individuals in Israel that would tell bear, bear that, that false tale about men that have been dedicated to pushing the word for nearly 40 years. And that's wrong. It says, Thou shalt not be, it says, Thou shalt not go up and down as a tale bearer among thy people. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord Yahweh. So you're not even supposed to even consent to someone putting somebody to death. Right? Why do you think Paul got uh, um, rebuked and reproved? Yahweh Shai had to rebuke and reprove Paul because he had consented to Stephen's death in the book of Acts, the seventh chapter. So the sure mercies of David are applied now that Yahweh Shai is on the scene. But initially, we're to make sure that brothers are on point, man. Okay, it says, verse 17, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. We don't hate brothers. We correct brothers. GMS corrects brothers and rebukes brothers according to the scripture. What you do after the correction is that is uh, between you and your Yahweh Shai. But I, I see General Bishop Nate be going off. But you don't think that we're not going to do a video if we see something that he's teaching is wrong? Pastor's always getting on this guy. But when he's on point, he's on point. But when you're wrong, you're wrong. It's not hate. It's for truth's sake. It says, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And not suffer sin upon him. So that's something we have to do. As individuals, as camp leaders, region leaders, as brothers in the ministry in the state camps. And, 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 and I'm talking about Great Millstone. Worldwide, you know, we didn't get no plane. Pastors didn't charter no jet to go to these different places. It's all organic through the spirit of Yahweh Shai. You know? But we have to make sure that we're we're not suffering sin upon each other. And that's going to take, of course, you know, your case to understand how that would be dished out. I'm not speaking for every camp head or, you know. Things will be, hey, and what Scripture says, let all things be done decently and in order. Okay? But I'm just reading out of these scriptures. It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt not. I mean, it says, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. A lot of times we need to just say something when we see it. Esau got that campaign, say something, see something. You might, you know, send a text message or a video. You know, really, we need to just go ahead and say something right then. Pull a brother to the side, say something. If not, you pull another brother with you. 
sometimes, really, a lot of times, it comes to a point where we, shit, we just need to just open up and just curse each other out for doing the wrong thing. And that'll happen too. But it's all for the betterment of the body. It says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. It's not for hate. It's for correction. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. We don't want the next Israelite brother and sister to go off. We don't want the next brother in this camp to go off, especially within our actual individual camps. You know, we you know, we try to, you know, do our best to make sure the brothers is okay. Amongst all of us. And that's just the truth of it. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart, thou shalt in any wise Rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon it. So we see, when we see somebody going off, the point is we need to say something. Ask, inquire, say, hey. But we see somebody brother going off blatantly. Hey, bro, what you doing? Scratch the record, okay? Yeah, I think that's what I call him. It's a, a, a look, you got to scratch the record with Jake, you know? Shoot, y'all was eating the Passover with his apostles. His, his, uh, Students, and then what? You know what happened? He had to rebuke Judas. You know, one of you was a devil. You know, who shall dip his his hand in the sock with me with his bread? I'm just roughly paraphrasing. You know, I got Satan on him. It was Judas. It was a solemn assembly, but it was eating, singing songs. But guess what? Spiritual business had to be taken care of. So sometimes you got to rebuke a demon. Out the way, even if it's on the brother. Get that demon off that brother, man. You know? It says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children or the sons of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord, Yahweh Bashmi Shai. And Yahweh Shai echoed the same thing. He says, These two, off of these two commandments, Hang all the law and the prophets. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and soul, right? Which is Yahweh, you know, Yahweh, Bashmi, and thou shalt um, love thy neighbor as thyself. So you, so you love the Lord with all your soul and you love your neighbor. So I'm in the here. I just want to speak that while the Spirit was on me. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, this is still the Feast of Tabernacles for us here at GMS. So, you know, that weekly feast is still going on, you know, eight days. Brothers is, is, is you know, growing through the spirit. So the edification has to come out. I'm going to give all praises and glory and honors unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Kapodash. Double honor to the apostles, bitches, a great millstone. I'm praying, hoping that this is edifying to the whole four elect out there. Shalom.